Hello there guys, this is the story story and today we are talking about a Clint Eastwood movie, The Mule. The Mule came out in December 2014, sorry, December 2018. Uh, its production budget was around 50 million and it made 103 million dollars domestically. Worldwide it made 171 million dollars, so it was a pretty good hit for a movie like The Mule, uh, which is <laughs> of course not a superhero movie or a, a very, you know, very big budget movie or anything. It is a very serious and great movie. And a, you should watch The Mule and understand how realistic movies are actually made. Realistic movies don't have crazy sound drama. Realistic movies don't have uh, crazy special effects. Uh, realistic movies are very simply made with uh, very linear small soundtracks and everything uh, and if you watch The Mule you'd know that it is a very clean and realistic movie based on a true story true story of an, uh, a guy who a white guy in the Americas uh, who is uh, 80 to 89 years old somewhere in between and uh, he's, uh, he's lonely and he works for the cartel for the cartel uh, Mexican cartel and transport some drugs. Uh, so this movie came out in 2018 and it was a pretty good movie uh, and Rotten Tomatoes, Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the Wokey Wok site uh, doesn't really seem interested a lot. Uh, so both of its uh, tomato meter and audience score are pretty much the same, uh, 70% and 68% and now these movies are, uh, the realistic actually good movies are not not very much, you know, pushed anyway. So it is a pretty good score, 68 and 70 percent. Uh, but of course, uh, we are going to, to see the reviews of people, uh, and it's going, it's getting pretty much good reviews. Uh, it's a watchable movie, loosely based on a true story. There's a nice storytelling thing to it, and Eastwood is frankly far more interesting than Robert Redford was in his recent swan song. Uh, 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 there's one little bad comment, a little nuance and it could have gotten there but Eastwood's already moving on. I don't get it really. Well, but the, <laughs> the best thing about these reviews is that uh, the Roger Ebert side, the Roger Ebert, uh, no, Roger Ebert died in 20. 13 or some, uh, some time and ever since then, ever since then, uh, some crazy SJWs and feminists have uh, completely filled up uh, the RogerUbert.com and this review of the mule comes from Christy Lanier, Christy Lanier on RogerUbert.com and she says, uh, Clint Eastwood's The Mule, which he directed and stars in is based on the incredible true story of an octogenarian, octogenarian means an 80 to 89 year old guy, or woman, or whatever, who became an unlikely drug mule transporting staggering amounts of cocaine for a major Mexican drug cartel. It features an esteemed cast including Bradley Cooper, Lawrence Fishburne, Diane Reist, and Andy Garcia. Uh, Andy Garcia very very small but it was okay I would say and it grapples with uh, several of Eastwood's preferred themes over Eastwood's preferred themes she thinks that she knows every Clint, uh, Clint Eastwood's preferred theme uh, over his legendary career including regret, forgiveness and inevitability of mortality now, so inevitability of mortality is a preferred theme and you probably don't think so of Christy Lanier because that's why you have given two out of four stars she is giving uh, him uh, the mule uh, 50% that's what she is giving it it is a really really realistically and creatively made movie so such a serious movie should be given at least 70 to 80% at least that's that, that's my theory but these uh, feminists and SJWs they would always, always demotivated the actual good films, uh, which is the new, of course. Uh, all the pieces would seem to be in place, uh, she writes, uh, on paper at least, 
for a rich and gripping grown-up drama. Yes, grown-up drama. Uh, of course, you, you, pro- you probably think MCU movies are also a grown-up drama. Isn't this right? So why does the result feel so elusive and unsatisfying? Eastwood's direction is elegant and efficient as ever. That I don't disagree with. Uh, but the script from Nick Schenk, uh, uh, Nick Schenk, uh, who also wrote Grant Torino, as she writes, based on a New York Times ma- magazine article by Sam Dolnick, doesn't give its gifted actors much to work with, and that includes the icon of the film center. At the film center, uh, I think it was it was pretty engaging. I would say it was pretty engaging. Uh, there there were there were very few, or I would say, no dull moments at all in uh, Eastwood's whole directorial. Uh, Eastwood's Earl Stone, Earl Stone is the name of the character uh, who is playing the movie. Uh, remains a frustrating enigma despite being the film's driving force. Uh, <laughs> no pun intended, because driving is the main occupation that Earl Stone is doing. Uh, could he truly be so naive at the start as not to know what he is uh, agreeing to carry in the back of his pickup truck? Or does he does just not care after several runs there's a moment that when he finally dares to peek at the contents inside one of the duffel bags that have been packed alongside his golf clubs, he reacts with shock, and that's the end of that. An ethical exploration could have given the story some necessary heft. No, no, you uh, you, you don't understand uh, this uh, ramen. This Raman uh, Christie doesn't understand the uh, ethical understanding of or psychology of a, an 80 year old. An 80 year old is not going to think about, oh, I've got drugs, I should stop it. No. No. An 80 year old guy is at the end of his life. He needs money, and that's why he knows, he already knew from the first, that he's doing something wrong. But he pulled it off anyway because he needed the money. You don't understand an older guy's psychology, Miss Christie. Uh, that's why you're in SCW. <laughs> Early glimpses of the man in a flashback to 2005 suggest that Earl is a smooth scanning operator flirting with the adoring, uh, adoring elderly ladies at a daily convention where the longtime horticulturist is tantamount to a rock star. He'd also rather party with strangers at a hotel bar than appear at the second wedding of his daughter, Iris, who is also played by Eastwood's real life daughter, Alison Eastwood. So perhaps. Earl is just really good at compartmentalizing, but even an actor of Eastwood's subtlety and stature has uh, trouble conveying the heart of this complicated man. Twelve years later, having suffered the foreclosure of his Illinois uh, flower farm and struggling to stay afloat financially, Earl says yes when a stranger at his granddaughter's bridal brunch hands him a phone number. Soon after ma- meeting him and suggests he could make a decent amount of cash just by driving, the connection happens too quickly and feels contrived. Uh, no, it does not happen too quickly. The guy, the guy at, the, at this meeting, he saw an older guy, an older guy in need of cash. So he went in and uh, gave a card. That, that's what just happened. It's very simple. Uh, you, somebody gives you a card and tells you that oh you, you'll get a lot of money out of this. Then and you're 80 to 90 years old, then you'd at least take the chance. Uh, in a, uh, but this person can definitely can understand because <laughs> she's a man <laughs> in a parallel storyline that languidly converges with Earl's Cooper gets even less to work with uh, as a DEA agent Colin Bates whose task is to stem the flow of drugs into the Chicago area. Fishburne also plays his boss, Cooper's boss, meaning Bradley Cooper. It would seem impossible to render Cooper an Oscar nominee for Eastwood's 2014 drama American Sniper, Krishna Free, but the mule manages to accomplish that dubious feat. Of course, the thing is, the thing about 
the mule is it is very very realistic and the generic theme of it is actually its greatness it's, it's actually its uh, feature it's actually its quality and making the uh, Bradley Cooper's character uh, very very generic is actually its good quality working alongside Michael Pena as his uh, similarly bland partner similarly bland partner she is she is demotivating the storytelling and the characterization of every character again and again bland partner of course it is supposed to be bland you idiot cooper's agent bates is coolly competently focused on his assignment and that's about the extent of his character development that needs no character development he is he is just an FBI, uh, DEA agent. He doesn't need this character development. The character development has to be with her. You're, you're grabbing a different character and thinking about its character development. But actually, there is character development with Bradley Cooper's uh, um, character. Uh, you see, if you see this movie, then you would see that uh, uh, Bradley Cooper is influenced by the mule, the uh, Earl Stone's character, and he he takes in some influences to take care about his family. That's his character development. But of course, that is not seen by this woman. Uh, <laughs> the actual back and forth between El Paso, Texas, and the generic uh, generic Midwestern motel, where Earl delivers the goods, offer some aesthetic pleasures, a stretch through White Sands National Monument is especially striking and uh, he uh, talks some inner, inner things, but what's really, really weird about this whole uh, review is this last, these last few paragraphs, there's also an icky, creeping sensation of xenophobia that permeates the film. She literally goes into xenophobia uh, about the movie. Wow. After demotivating and denigrating the film again and again throughout her prose she goes into xenophobia that permeates the film one could imagine uh, she's, uh, she writes one could imagine the mule being used as an argument in favor of President Trump's proposed border wall Trump you you bring Trump into the review of a movie wow Trump's proposed border wall given its tone deaf and one dimensional uh, depiction of the minorities <laughs> Earl encounters minorities <laughs> Earl encounters see this is the thing uh, about SJWs they think that everybody from a midsection from, from a subsection of the society is a minority but no these people are not minority they are part of a bigger population they they, they are so much obsessed with oppression that they, uh, they think everybody uh, he encounters, Earl Stone encounters with, is a minority. Uh, and uh, because Earl Stone is a white male, he's the most privileged one. <laughs> casually racist. She calls him casually racist. He refers to blacks and Hispanics in good-naturedly antiquated terms. Good-naturedly antiquated terms. He, of course, use, uses the N-word because obviously... See, uh, most people don't know this, but except U.S., the whole world, the whole world uses the N-word. I'm not kidding about this. The whole world knows the N-word and uses it, and uh, there's no ban on it. So I don't know what has happened in U.S. and what has uh, the, the, this whole, uh, because U.S. is actually controlling all of the Internet, people on the Internet think that the N-word is abolished. But actually, it's not. It's out there. People use it. Whenever they come to, uh, you know, uh, refer to a uh, an African American man, they use the N word, and they don't see the problem there. Yes, that's a reality. I I'm not joking about this. Uh, but then all the Mexicans he works for are scary, gun-talking criminals uh, who want to bring drugs into our country, and many of them are depicted in stereotypical fashion with shaved heads and neck tats because uh, they are showing Mexicans in shaved heads and neck tats that's racist according to this woman uh, they are taking advantage of Earl 
a hard working Korean war veteran who's seen the who's seen the American dream collapse beneath him, Earl is Trump's proverbial forgotten man, elderly, white and living in the heartland. He listens to country music and longs for a simpler time before the internet complicated everything. He is in your movie theater today, but you could easily imagine him on Fox News tomorrow. I mean, what kind of crazy as GW you, this Christy Lemire has to be to bring Trump xenophobia, uh, Trump's proverbial forgotten man, elderly white, and Fox News in her own uh, review of this movie. These SJWs are so obsessed with <laughs> just clamoring everybody down, man. Oh. Anyway, this is a good movie. If you want, if you're, if you have the heart for actually good realistic movies, actually good hearted films, then go watch you uh, or you know hire it from somewhere or watch it on Netflix or some place. Uh, the movie, the movie is a very good movie. This is a storyteller. We'll be back with more reviews, more cringe, and uh, boy. Uh, like and subscribe if you like your content. Peace.